Welcome to the finale analysis. Analysis of ReZero. This is the final one. Let's check over some of the most important parts and talk about what's going on. There's a lot of interesting things with Betelgeuse, the gospel, and even like the Amelia and Subaru conversation at the end. So the fight continues between Betelgeuse and Natsuki Subaru and Julius. Thanks to Nect, what's happening? We're able to combine our senses. We're basically together. What Subaru sees, Natsuki Subaru also sees as well, right? And Betelgeuse can't comprehend why this is happening. I think that thematically, he always gets upset about the unseen hand being seen. Beyond an OP power that should be invisible being seen to other people. What is the shock? Like, why is he so upset? I think that if, if it's all, all about like a one-sided love to the witch, maybe it makes sense that like this is something again that only me and Satala are supposed to share. And the fact that you're seeing this is like... You're cucking me. Maybe that's one interpretation. I don't know. He always fucking loses it though when people can see his unseen hand. Of course, it's gonna be a shock when it's us, when it's like just like your your trump card and suddenly people can see it. As soon as the hand touches Julius, you immediately see blood. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be some sort of animation error or if or if or if these attacks did like grip him so hard and we we weren't able to see it in the anime. But that was kind of interesting. Uh, what else happens? It just basically just Spirit Knight is fucking uh, better to goose up. It was pretty easy, right? This fight was honestly a fucking wash. I'm surprised that better goose didn't try to attack Subaru more. He was obviously focused on Julius, and it is 2v1, but just beat him. And is there any other super important thing? My blade of all six elements together will slice your very soul apart. That was a lie though, right? This was a lie, right? Because if that was true, then Betelgeuse's soul would not have escaped to Subaru, or Betelgeuse at this point ejected his soul. So like, if Betelgeuse didn't eject his soul, I'm not sure exactly how that shit works, maybe Ulysses' attacks would have done damage to the soul, or he's capping, yeah. Like, I don't know, very soul apart. We know that like, you know, a soul is a different entity. If you actually destroy the soul, then you're actually gone like in Tensura. Who knows if he's capping here, but uh, Betrigu says, I will not let it end. I have been nothing but diligent. Again, the virtue that opposes Sloth. And why is he so virtuous? Because he, again, just like Christianity, he always repents his sins. It's all about being the opposite of Sloth, even though he represents Sloth. But who really knows how the other Archbishops will behave? It'd be interesting to see if other Ar uh, Archbishops actually lean into their, uh, their sins and actually doesn't give a fuck about the virtues. Who knows? Maybe because Betelgeuse is so virtuous, Satal doesn't like it. And if you're more succumbing to your sins, you'll like it? I don't know, man. And this part, undo next, right? Because Subaru gets possessed here. Now, what would happen here if we didn't undo next, right? Let's consider a situation where Subaru still had a connection with Julius. And then Betelgeuse took over Subaru. Would Julius and Betelgeuse then be possessed? I don't think so. It'd be interesting. Because the, the connection with the gate allowed them to share their vision. Before, it allowed us to communicate through everybody to understand how to overcome that Genjutsu from Ram. But... It'd be really interesting to think about, huh? Like, if a Nect wasn't undone and Betelgeuse possessed Subaru. I'm not sure. That's a very interesting thing that would have happened. This constant back and forth of, you know, <laughs> Subaru and Betelgeuse. Basically, if Tongue is out, Betelgeuse is out. If Tongue is in, <laughs> Subaru is in. And this part was crazy. So, I don't know exactly how far he thought this through, but it's another situation where Subaru is actually a genius. Like, the strategies he performs, like even the white whale to climb to be sent to the top of the white whale with Alhuma and then to fall down and use I can return by death. Like, I never thought about that, but like this too. He basically wanted Betelgeuse to come in and then call upon the witch and banked it on the witch to kill Betelgeuse. I don't know if this was like. Again, like, a random chance. But I feel like he planned this out and the gamble worked out. Because we know that the envious witch only wants Subaru. So, <laughs> Metricus is so happy. 
<laughs> he finally sees Satala. We can't really see Satala though, right? Look at her. It's just dark, mysterious, enveloped shroud shadows. And then Satala reaches out, touches Goose's hands, and then realizes, hold up. These are not the hands of a 17-year-old Neat that's done nothing but sit inside and has 70 kilograms of grip strength. Who the fuck are you? Rejected. No, you are not the one. This is the closest that we've ever seen, Satala. What does she look like here? We can't really tell, right? Maybe some sort of facial symmetry with Amelia. Maybe the hair is similar. I don't know. It, it just... There's... From the beginning, we've been told that Amelia is a half-elf. And who else is a half-elf, right? Satala. The comparisons, the resemblance between these two are just fucking unreal, right? And like, even with the conversations at the end with Amelia saying 2000, like, why is 2000? It's just, just, the author is trolling. The author is fucking trolling. There's so much similarities. Maybe they're just... Is Satala Amelia's mom? But they're both half-elves. In order for a half-elf to produce another half-elf as an offspring, you would need to fuck another half-elf. I think that's what would happen, right? You, you, you can't be just a regular non-elf or just a full elf. No, the math doesn't add up. It needs to be another half-elf, right? That's the only way. If you've taken like genetics classes, just basic biology, there's like X, Y, X, X, blah, 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 you know, and then you can see how the different fucking partitions. And I, I think, but but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't necessarily think just because Satala is a half-elf that Emilia is somehow related to her like blood-wise but who knows man maybe that is the case Goose gets smacked out and his <laughs> his soul just gets repelled back to the body here so Satala was genuinely upset Satala was genuinely upset that this is not Natsuki Subaru expels Betrigus poor Betrigus man that smack was so fucking personal literally yeeted him out of the fucking body I was prepared to keep trying until you left me, but you gave up after one go. How cowardly can you be? Super telling, you know, better to because, you know, we've suffered over and over again. And at this point, why, why, why? After everything I've done for you, which, which sucks, man. It's kind of sad. This is, again, just like one-sided love, right? One-sided love from better to Satala. But apparently Satala actually like did a lot of things for Goose a long time ago. And Goose says, like, even if you've forgotten. That was a very important line, man. Give me your love, give me your love. The rock smashes him. And at this point, I think his physical body is smashed up. But we know he returns later. And I think that was, like, a different form. Better Goose, you were a sloth, all right. I guess this is the thing that I wanted for Subaru to say, right? I always wanted him to, like, say, Anata taira desu ne. Just like how he said, no ka furueru last episode. But close enough. We get the gospel again. Again, this gospel, bro. <laughs> so many interesting things with the gospel here. So we pick up the gospel yet again. And what happens? We flip through the pages and it's blank. During the reaction, what did I theorize? I said, huh, that's interesting. Like, we can't read the gospel. We know that the gospel is supposed to be a set of instructions, a guide. Something that Goose is supposed to follow to help achieve Day of the Ordeal, right? And because he also referred to it and said, there's no account of you here, meaning of the things that Better Goose was told to do, Natsuki Subaru where someone, you know, showing up as pride was never accounted for, even in the pre uh, past episodes. Uh, yeah, even in the past episode. No, was it the past episode where he's like flying? Like a cute hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in those moments, right? Betrigus says, like, oh my god, like, this is not supposed to be part of my, uh, gospel. So that has to mean that this is some sort of script, a guide, some sort of set of instructions that you're supposed to follow. But no more, right? There is no more after this page. Why is that? Because either patch notes haven't hidden. I don't know who writes this gospel. I have no clue. Like, if we consider this the Bible... But a Bible is different from, like, well, let's consider this the Bible. Did Jesus Christ write the Bible? Who actually knows lore about the whole Bible and religion and Christianity? It's not Jesus Christ that wrote the Bible, right? It was his followers, right? 
Now, I don't know, we can do a direct comparison and say the cult members are the ones writing the gospel. I doubt it, right? Because how would it make sense for Better Geese to write his own gospel, right? It seems like it's just given. So either there's patch notes where after each significant event, the gospel is written more by Satala, I'm not sure. Or this was the extent of this gospel, right? This was the extent of this gospel. There's no more after this because this was Better Goose's purpose. His purpose was to die here. His purpose was to leave the gospel and be given to Subaru? I don't know. I, I, I have no clue, but like, you could think of it that way, right? If it's supposed to be a scripting guide and if this purpose is blank afterwards, either it hasn't been filled in because the time isn't ready yet or that's it. You've served your purpose, you're done. Natsuki Subaru obviously continues to bring his, you know, fucking gospel in his back top pocket and later on, bro, when he writes it in blood, that's another fucking crazy thing. Um, at this point, we're talking about how to get to the bomb, right? There's a bomb underneath. This is the final challenge, the final struggle. And then we need Otto. At this point, it's like, it's like, oh shit, how do we get there fast? How do we get there fast? Otto is here. Otto apparently has a divine protection. Soul of the language or something, right? Uh, more death flag, death flags. Otto knows all the secrets path. Your soul of language divine protection is amazing. Okay, so this is important, right? Soul of language lets Otto talk to like different creatures, like land dragons, insects. He can even like cure the trees. And by doing so, I guess it kind of gives him like, that's an insane power. Cause like, you just know, like anytime like a natural disaster would happen, you know how animals always leave? Otto would know beforehand. There's like so much vision and so much intel. That's kind of fucking crazy, man. And obviously, Otto was in the third cover poster picture for Star Season. So you can kind of assume, like, you can have an understanding of, like, how important Otto as a character is. If he's sitting, if he's standing right next to Bieko. Like, think about that. Otto is standing next to Bieko in the third season cover of ReZero. So clearly he's super important. Maybe we'll get more about him in the season two. The maniacal look that he has in his eyes, insane. He just lives for the adrenaline and the thrill of the rush. Don't let this guy find a Bugatti, bro. The trees tells him stuff, something is coming, and this form... So this is... Well, we see Betrugus' body, but the body... What is this form? Does anyone actually know from the source material? Because, like, obviously his body is pretty much done. But you can see the unseen hands just form this crazy monster-like thing. He's like, looks like he's all on all fours and he's just like running. It's a very weird form. I think someone made a comment about this, but yeah. <laughs> if other people like looked around, it'd be basically Bethergeus's corpse just full of, like hovering, right? But yeah, it, it, it just looks like his body's falling apart. The unseen hand is just barely just keeping it together and... My man is just so down for Satala, even after getting rejected. It suck. It, it's just kind of sad to see Betrigus in this state, man. The kids and the Amelia. Oh yeah, we got some Wilhelm moments over here. Just classic Wilhelm moments. Puck being useless as all hell never fucking helps out. The kids here actually leak. They snitch on Subaru, which is a good thing. Because now Amelia is aware that, oh shit, Subaru is around. He's helping out. What is he doing, right? Petra says, ah, shit, what have you done? But this was a very good snitch, right? This is an accidental leak, but it kind of helps us. Let's see. How many times have to play the last level is pretty funny. What about you, Slothful, now, you uselessly hard worker? Remember, the whole theme of Betrigus being the Archbishop Sin of Sloth makes no sense because he's always being diligent and he punishes that of Sloth. But again, we need to see more of the different Archbishops to see if they act just like it. Which Satala give me? Someone made a comment in another analysis video saying, hey, even though the Witch's Cult, there's like, someone literally said there's no connection between the Witch's Cult and the Witch of Envy. And I'm like, what? And I don't know if this is like a super sweaty light novel reader trying to give me subtle hints, but they're like, yep, 
The Witch's Cult has never directly been shown to be associated with the Witch of Envy. But I'm like... Day of the Ordeal... Witch... Witch of Envy... Satala... Better Goose is specifically saying Satala... Are you trolling me right now? Are you... Because, like, that's a ridiculous thing to say. But I could totally understand if the light novel readers are trying to... Subtly hint at something greater going... A thing going beyond... Uh... Something greater going on behind the scenes. The cult members have obviously mobilized to try to awaken the witch. And... I guess it was the way that I phrased it. I think that, uh... It's the way that I phrased it. I said that... Satala has created a cult of simps. But one could understand and interpret that into thinking Satala herself has mobilized the armies. But you could also indirectly do that by having a bunch of motherfuckers have a one-sided love that wants to resurrect a witch. But regardless, there is clearly a connection here and I think it's you mis misunderstanding what I'm trying to say. Satala, 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 love, love, love. She doesn't love you or me. Now she does. She does love Subaru so much. In what kind of rom-com does someone try to squash their love's heart? But like... It's different. It's different. It's a yandere. I don't know. I think that if you again ignore all of the sufferings that Subaru has to go through in each regression... The fact that the Witch's Miasma even stacks up I think does help indirectly. And also the regression power is super powerful. You are now this like all-knowing general. Like think of it from like... Betragus's perspective. This kid showed up out of nowhere and just folded my entire plans. Think about the perfect run in Betragus's uh, situation. He just showed up out of nowhere, fucking blind rushed me with Patrash, fucking dragged me all the way, and then Julius was ready to take me out. Just immediately knew how to take down the Unseen Hand. It must be so fucking. It must be so unfair to Betragus right now. But the squashing of Love's Heart, yes. Super, uh, like, Satala does kind of like have a death grip on it, but I think she does love you one way or the other. This part is very interesting, where he brings out the gospel, right? Now he throws the oil that he was about, to, I, I think the oil that he threw was the buckets that uh, we bought before. Love, love is everything, here's the oil. This is a pretty cool scene. Rental Goa. Took me a while to figure out what Rental Goa means. No, it didn't. I caught that shit immediately. This dude literally fucking has a chuny name. Because like, Ia. The Rental Goa is simply Ia just floating and landing on Goose's oil ridden face to blow up. <laughs> but it looks cool to do like a spirit gun and call it a Rental Goa. I'll take it. That's a cool name. Ia has been so clutch. Ia has been so clutch. The only L Ia ever took was when Ia got forcibly expelled because Betragus' soul was within Subaru. But I'll, I don't even consider that an L, man. I don't even consider that shit an L. Ia has saved Subaru from a finger. Ia also helped Subaru overcome Ram's Genjutsu. Ia created a barrier to protect Subaru against the finger suicide bomb when Felix was in there. Ia... Rental Goa. Ia... Clutch. Honestly, Ia might be like... S tier character. Like, think about all the feats that Ia has done. In the Arc 3 tier list, Ia is going to the peak tier, just like fucking Meteor, man. Just like a Nokia flip phone. Ia, <laughs> it's a fucking. <laughs> if you really think about it, Ia put in the most work. Ia straight up put in the most work out of anybody, bro. Even more than Julius, fuck it. I don't care. Patrash has done a lot too, but it doesn't come close to Ia. No. I acknowledge what Patrash has done for us, but Ia has done like sixfold. Patrash has done like two or three significant things, maybe. Ia has done like six separate shit, bro. Puck doesn't do fucking anything. Puck is straight up ass in Arc 3. All Puck does is help us fucking reset our runs. Just fucking... Puck just so useless, man. Okay, this part is very interesting. I haven't forgotten a single moment of the things you did for me. What does this imply? It means that in the past, Satala apparently helped out Betragus. But one could also interpret this scene as it was a one-sided thing, where Satala may not even known that Goose existed, but Goose is somehow inspired or motivated from Satala, and it like helped him find a new purpose in life. I'm not too sure. And then, 
what this goose says. Even if you've forgotten, right? So, uh, again, it, it's very obscure. There's a lot of different ways this, this line could fit into the story. Even if you've forgotten, the most intuitive way to think about this is Satala and Better Goose did interact in the past. She gave him a new purpose. She helped him out. And for whatever reason, she forgot everything. Maybe. Maybe. Or everything was one sided from the beginning. Goose found purpose through Satala, even though Satala didn't even know that Goose existed. And because Satala doesn't even know, Goose is thinking, even if you've forgotten. You know what I mean? It's just like... I don't know. I don't know. Something about this is very interesting. But if she helped him, then Better Goose is 400 plus years old? Doesn't really mean that. Better Goose doesn't have to be 400 years old. He could be. Um, what was that one in that one episode when Puck killed Better Goose? I think Better Goose, uh, Puck said that you're just a couple decades. You're, did he say be a decade or centuries? I'm not sure, but yeah, it's 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 not a limit. I, I don't think there's any logical inconsistencies there, even if she's super old. Like, Better Goose doesn't himself doesn't have to be that old, he can be young and still do it. Like, even in the last 50 years, I, I think it's fine. Decades, okay, decades, all right, not centuries, decades, yeah. No, there has always been a parallel between the Satala and the cult, which is called an Emilian Subaru. It's always been a theme of one-sided love. There's actually more than... It's not just like the Witch's Cult and like Better Goose and Satala and Subaru and Amelia, right? Rem to Subaru. That's one-sided love, right? There's, there's a lot of different one-sided loves in this show. This part? Bro, how the fuck do you throw a... How the fuck do you throw a gospel at somebody that's burning? And he catches it because obviously he realizes how important it is. And Goose does take delicate care of it, making sure that it's not harmed. But then he gets punched in the face. And then the gospel comes back like, Bro! Yes, it, it, I, I see what led to the gospel coming back. Goose was taking extra care of it because that's how important the gospel is to him. And he got punched and it came back, but like, damn, bro. This thing is just on another level. It just keeps coming back. Can we assume at this point that the gospel has been delivered to us? What the fuck? And then, look, 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 look. This is the craziest shit. I think this part, something changed here. Maybe it's my headcanon, but like, when we're talking about witches, we're talking about cults, gospels. This dude literally wrote in the gospel with his own fucking blood. What? What? Like... I... I don't know, man. This... At this point, what do you think happened? Is this like the final nail in the coffin? Like, this is now officially Natsuki Subaru's gospel. Maybe there's no meaning. Maybe nothing happens when you're writing the gospel with your blood, but I feel like something has to happen. Because of how much emphasis there is with Subaru being on the level of an Archbishop of the Miasma, we know that because Satala loves him and gives him all that favor. Countless mentions of, are you pride? And maybe there is a different pride candidate that's coming on the way, right? Who knows? But like, Natsuki Subaru is very prideful, and he has Miasma on the level of an Archbishop, and he now has a gospel, and he wrote in blood. I just, oh man, oh man. Like, what is this gonna do in the future? Like season two, season three, and he just keeping this shit around. Even when we first took down uh, Better Goose in that, in that ruined run, that heroic run, and Subaru took that gospel and put it in his back pocket, I was like, this is so suspicious, man. A dude with your level of miasma carrying a gospel around, what happens when some other archbishop shows up, right? What happens? Well, we still can't read the gospel, not for whatever reason. Maybe there's some sort of different witch language, but this part, I think was one of the most interesting part of the story for me. Him writing in, in blood in the gospel, saying you're finished. So, does, so what does the kanji say here? You are finished? Does this say the end? What does this say? Is it just the end? End. So, er, what was the theory for? Uh, the theory was uh, the pages are blank for better to use because either the patch notes of what next to do hasn't hit yet, or um, what was it? It was that, or 
this was truly the purpose of Better Goose, and there was nothing more that needs to be said. And now the gospel has been transferred, and Subaru is writing the end for Better Goose, and now it's the beginning for Subaru's gospel. Like, imagine the next day he wakes up and he reads the gospel, he can read it. Imagine the next day or something, like the first couple episodes of season two, who knows? He flips through the pages, like, I wonder what the gospel's up to. And he sees letters in there and he can read that shit. Oh my fucking god. That would be so cool, but uh, I don't know, man. This part is just so important. Let's keep in mind of that. Very important mental note as we go into season two. <laughs> Watch season two never even talk about the gospel. That would be fucking so troll. And then this is it, man. Goose is dead. This time, stay asleep forever, Better Goose. Better Goose, I loved him as a villain. Yes, I know what he's done for Rem, right? But think about it. It's thanks to Better Goose that episode 15 was that good. Thanks to Better Goose, Rem could have that moment, bro. I love Better Goose as a villain. His voice actor, Kirito's voice actor, phenomenal acting. It's not just the voice acting, it's like the mannerisms of his characters and all of this goofiness, the craziness. And he was the first Archbishop we ever found, right? This is our first impression of what the Witch's Cult could be. He fucking nailed it. He absolutely clutched. I was so compelled by what the cult could be as we heard about it in episode 7 from Rem. And Goose shows up. Oh my god, just <laughs> beautiful. Just fucking beautiful, bro. Rest in peace, Better Goose. The rest of it is just saving Amelia, right? Not much to be said here other than Amelia thinking back to Subaru and like feeling bad and thinking about all the... and. Yeah, of course, she's too nice of a girl, right? Yes, these moments were absolutely mean, but Subaru deserved that shit. It was a reality check he needed. But obviously, Amelia feels some level of guilt, right? And thinking, why would he do that after I've done all that for you? This part, bro. Ooh, ooh, bro. The slow motion hop over the carriage. And then he shows up. Lock him, baby. Doesn't even acknowledge Amelia. Takes the bomb and runs away. True hero shit. True hero shit, bro. A little bit cringe? Maybe. Maybe a little bit cringe. But I love this shit, man. I love this shit. I let him have his moment. And why? Because I love you, Amelia. Notice how he doesn't say Aish today. The What was the other one? Aish Tereu? Aish Aishte something. That's like more than Skides, right? This I love you is different from um, uh, Rem's I love you. Wonder when uh, Subaru will actually say that. Aishteru. Aishteru? Something like that. But that's like the more intimate one. This is the white whale. So it looks frozen. Were they really trying to eat this shit? Why would they freeze the whale carcass? What do you, what do you think happened here? Because I was looking at him like, what the fuck is this? It looks like frozen tuna. It's frozen whale. So like, after we subjugated the white whale, they were talking about like, I don't know. Are we going to put it in the museum? I, I, are, are we going to eat it? <laughs> I, I don't know. Because like, because we're going to eat this shit, right? Maybe this is going to be the feast in the kingdom, man. But uh, we froze the whale meat, the whale blubber. We throw the bomb under there. And Subaru just fucked up <laughs> this explosion, bro. How could you do this? This is gonna be the Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica's next like year of food. All the people in the ghettos and slums, they could have been uh, fed with this shit. Subaru just blows this shit up! And we run out. <laughs> Thinking about all the great moments of season one. The impact of the explosion is huge. Boom, and I'm like, oh no, the Subaru die? What do we see here? Where's Patrash? Where's that moment where Patrash hugs Subaru to protect him? Yeah, right over here, bro. So good. So good. Patrash's first instinct to huddle up and cover Subaru, bro. I love Patrash. Patrash is great. I swear to God, if Patrash dies, bro, I'm gonna be so sad. They're making us love this land dragon so much. I love it, bro. And then boom, what happens after that? It's the victory run, right? It's just home run. The light is shining. We got a lap pillow and we're talking. And this is just basically pure dialogue. And there's a lot of good points of how Subaru acknowledges his faults, right? And what does he say? I was thinking only of myself. Thinking about this part, right? Because all of this was due to his selfish desires to prove himself. It was never about doing it for Amelia. It was about doing it for himself. Everything that he was doing selfless, 
It was an act of selfless, right? He was very selfish by trying to act selfless, which is a very interesting thing. But throughout all these failed runs, he acknowledges that he's very aware, overcomes it, and now we're all good, right? And even if I was doing it for myself in the past, I still want to be by your side. I want to help you, right? And why do you always save me? Because I love you. This part is kind of bullshit. Let's talk about this part. What the fuck has Amelia done for Subaru to love her that much? At this part, I think we have to understand what kind of character Subaru is. He's a stupid Dijon neat that's a 17 year old. He popped up in here in episode 1 and when he was struggling, Amelia did seemingly save him. She was the first one to show up and actually do something to help him out. And on top of that, she's also super hot, right? She's super hot, she, she saved him, he has a misunderstanding of why he, like, you can't just love a person without knowing them. But like, he also had a very interesting uh, dialogue about how people like that will continuously waste their time, right? It was about like, these act of selflessness. If you go back to episode one, Amelia makes a bunch of excuses as to why she did this. And at the end of the day, it was for myself and not you. And Subaru kind of is aware of that and says like, a girl like that will continue to waste her life forever. But I think that not more I think about it, he's talking about himself at that point. Right? So I think it's a combination of her being there when no one was there. Him simping for a really super hot isekai girl. And that's pretty much it. Right? Well, there's a little bit more of like hanging out, finding a kid, Appa's, Appa, you know, the Appa guy's kid, you know, walking in town together. It, it, it was just a spontaneous moment where a 17 year old could definitely be fooled into thinking he loves her even though it's like, why do you love her? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I think it makes sense why Subaru loves Amelia. I think a lot of people are very confused on this and they, they, are, they are right because like, why would you love? But if you again come back to this thinking like, this stupid 17 year old kid with no fucking social skills, wasted his life, was a neat, Amelia was there, all the time. In the beginning, yes, it makes sense why he loves her. And then in arc two, right? The lap pillow, absolutely. Lap pillow moment was a huge moment, absolutely, right? So it, it does make sense. It does make sense. Because I love you and I want to be your string. At this point, I'm not too sure Amelia even knows what love is. I think that she is such an innocent and a pure sheltered girl from the mountains. She doesn't even know what a date is. How could she know what love is, right? Subaru goes on to affirm her by saying, even if I'm a half-elf, you know, silver or half-elf, I don't care. I don't care. They despise you. None of that shit matters. Don't have any friends. Doesn't care. I don't care. Even if you're naive, I don't care. Even if you're selfish, I don't care. I will be there. It's just glaze, glaze, glaze. Oh man, this part. This part, bro. Oh my God. Ah, uh, 2000. At this part, I was like, hold the fuck up. This is not a happy ending. What is happening right now? Because I know what 2000 is. That's the total number of shadows that Satala can use. That was directly stated by Puck. Bro, a show like this is not randomly saying this. Now, they could be just trolling. They could be just trolling and just putting this number here out of just... J j just to like, there's no deeper meaning. It's just, yep, I know that there's relation. There, there's obviously a similarity in Amelia and Satala. So I'm going to just like sprinkle in just a little bit of facts that kind of aligns with Satala. But like, what is the meaning here? All this 2000 things I love about you. Subaru himself has spontaneously said 2000. Why is that? How could he know? He doesn't know. Right? It's not like Subaru paid attention to what Puck said about Better Goose's shadows not even being half of what Satala could do and then using that this year. I don't think so. But why could why did he at this point think 2000? Like like that just seems to be a coincidence. Unless at the end of the day, remember, there's time travel involved with this shit. 
right? Clearly, the Witch of uh, Witch of Envy has given him the regression power. There's time travel elements, and maybe in the future, Natsuki Subaru is very aware of the number two thousand, and you know, Tsatale shadows. And in this timeline, even though that is not that Natsuki Subaru, somehow indirectly, the future self and the past self has some sort of connection, like an Attack on Titan. You know what I mean? Attack on Titan. Path. Okay. Path. How, how does a path work in Attack on Titan? Everything is connected. Future and past. Therefore, shit like this being said, even though he has no reason to say it, the future Subaru has somehow convinced this... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I'm really fucking trying to understand how the fuck he could have said 2000 here without being spontaneous or being a coincidence. But at this point, that's the only explanation. Attack on Titan. Path. Future Subaru. Path Subaru. All connected. He has no idea though. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going with that. Fuck it. I, I'm going with that. All right. What's next? And then that's the kind of special privilege that I'll give you, right? This is very interesting. Because Amelia, when she ran out, she said, I was hoping you will be the last person. I was hoping that you would be the person to not give me special privilege, right? But in this run, he somehow pivots that and makes the special treatment a good thing, right? No matter what, I will be there for you. People discriminate, I will be there for you. That's the first time I've received special treatment that made me happy. Aww. You know what he should have done at this point? <laughs> should have licked her eyeballs. Just like how Goose says this. <laughs> you remember the tongue? When he licked the fucking tear. <laughs> Subaru should have done a bit of that. Because a hundred fold isn't enough to express how I feel about you. I'm happy. I'm so happy. I never even imagined I see the day. Right? What should I do? And this happiness, I don't think is love. Right? Let's not get it twisted. What's happening? This is a girl that's lived alone in the mountains with Puck, has no understanding what a date or a love is, has been, you know, outcasted, been hated, been called a half-wit, half-devil. People are terrified of her discrimination, but finally someone has shown her to affirm her of that, and she's happy because of that, because someone is finally validating her existence. I do not think that this is love. I still do not think that this is romantic intent. Maybe we're building up towards that point. But I think that she is simply being validated of her existence. And she's so happy that there's someone else that's there for her, even though there was never before. Right? I think that's what's going on here. <laughs> and we never get a confession back. Right? At this point, we never get a confession back. I don't know what to do. Uh, do I actually love you? I'm not sure. And she, she doesn't know, so we're, we're, we're going to be just, you know, we're, we're going to delay the confession. For someone like me to give him such happiness all the time, remember? I think this is, again, going back to the whole validation. Because everyone thinks that she's a half-devil. I actually feel like it's indulgent. A little bit of greed or gluttony elements were being shown here, maybe. I'm not sure. If you have so much that overflows, you can always share it. Share with me. You can take your time, Amelia. This part's kind of weird. Is it just me? Or is this kind of weird, bro? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe there's a culture difference between how... I don't know. Because, like, obviously, I'm from North America. And the author of this is from Japan. They have... Everyone already has different cultures of what love and romance may be. Some people might think it's cute. It's endearing. I think that this dude's grooming her. <laughs> <laughs> I think that he's grooming an innocent girl that has no understanding of what love is. And he's and he's slowly manipulating her to fall in love with Subaru even though she doesn't even know what love is. I don't know. Maybe I am off base here. Maybe I'm crazy. But when I read this line, something deep part of me was like, I don't know. And yes, exactly, right? I guess culturally, this would be closer to what could be considered normal in Japan, but I feel like it's still weird in other cultures. Exactly.
right? I think that's what I'm trying to say. There's different understandings of what romance or what's romantic, what's accepted, what not, right? In different cultures. And maybe in Japan, this is super chivalrous. Super wholesome. But my woke North American ass, when I read this shit, I'm like, oh boy. Oh boy, she getting groomed right now. I don't know. <laughs> so like, do you think Tate is intentionally doing this to portray a flaw in Subaru and how he approaches love? Or am I just a fucking woke libtard that's projecting my own Western values of what love is into an anime? I'm cooked, guys. <laughs> I'm cooked, guys. <laughs> You can take your time, Amelia. You can take your sweet time to fall in love with me, baby girl. I'll be by your side and you're gonna fall head over heels for me. Amelia, so happy. So happy, so happy. Amazing scenes, man. I love this. This is so light. This is like more than fucking dangerous in my heart, Carte, bro. Carte 25. And then through the eyes, we saw the Amelia. Remember, why was at this point? Whose eyes is this? This is Subaru's eyes, right? In his eyes, he sees a reflection of Emilia at the end of episode one, when we called her Satala in public, yeah? That's when everything was bad. But now, what was that? What do you think this part is? What do you think this part is? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that's not a, is that a witch? It's just wearing a witch hat. It's, it's kind of pretty troll. I, I, I do see a lizard man here, right? Right, I do see a lizard girl man with the witch hat, but like, he sees the angered Amelia when he called her Satala, right? In this moment, I think this is all about, holy shit, I fucked up so much back then, but look what I'm seeing now. The girl in front of me is smiling and crying and uh, tears of happiness. But in the past, it was like this. I think it's that. And then... What does he say? What does he say here? What does he say here? This is a cliffhanger. This is a cliffhanger. What does it say? Sigma. Sigma on the wall. Who is the skippityest of them all? No. What is he saying here, bro? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's no meaning here. Maybe this is just like an anime-specific thing to kind of keep the audience on their toes and they ended it and... There's no meaning. <laughs> there's no meaning and that's the end, man. And yes, uh, people are saying, please check out, you know, the eyes, the post credit scene. We're watching the original, right? We're not watching the or a director's cut or the different versions that has, you know, this like cut moment. That will be handled at the beginning of Season 2, so don't worry. We'll be covering that. And that's pretty much the finale of ReZero Season 1. Again, the most interesting and, and uh, curious part for me is the Gospel. I think we have a base understanding of what the Gospel is supposed to be. But when Subaru like wrote in blood into the Gospel, I feel like that is fucking insane. And then there's some troll fucking lines with 2000 being mentioned during the conversation with you know Amelia and Subaru. Whether or not that's a coincidence or if it was intentional, who knows? The only explanation that I can give as to why that 2000 wasn't just a coincidence is Attack on Titan past, past, future, current selves all fucking connected in one way or the other. And he just has some sort of subconscious. I don't know. I don't know. That's it for me. I'll see you next time.